Look at Luke 24. Luke the 24th chapter and the 46th verse. Luke's 24 and 46. And when Amashekoshah had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. He died. It behooved Amashekoshah to suffer and to be raised from the dead. But let's look at what he said in Luke 19 and 14. But his citizens, his own people, hated him and sent a message after him, saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. You know? His own people. Just like a lot of people now. They don't want him. They don't believe in him. People that have believed him have gone astray and don't believe in him anymore. But look what he's going to say to these citizens that would not have a Mashiach of Shai to reign over them. Because he's coming to judge and make war. This is their judgment. Luke 19, 27. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither, bring them in front of me, and slay them before me. Kill them before me. When he come to judge and make war. See, people are taking this lightly. There's gonna be people that's gonna be alive. He's gonna make sure that they're alive when he come back. That's why I look at Romans, I'm excuse me, Revelations 1 and 7. Revelation 1 and 7. The first chapter 7 verse. Behold, he coming, he coming. With clouds. The clouds are the chariots of the most high, what we call IFOs. They call them UFOs. We know that they identify flying objects, the angels. <laughs> Behold, he coming with clouds. And every eye shall see him. Everybody gonna see him. So don't worry about nobody saying, oh, my check of the is over here. He's coming here. This everybody gonna see him when he come. Make no mistake about it. And they also wish pierced him, you know? They also wish pierced him. They gonna be here too. And those that pierce him now. Gonna be there to see it. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail. That means cry because of him. Even so. Hmm. Better understand and understand. Look at Acts, the ninth chapter, 15th verse. Acts 9 and 15. We're looking at. Suffering, mourning, our tribulations. Acts 9 and 15. But Amashiach of Shai said unto him, to Paul, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things. So he's going to show him how great things. So lucky. Great things. Great things. What? He must suffer for my name's sake. But by Hashem of Mashiach, I was shot. Say, why? Because when you look at Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, This is what he was about. Go to verse 1. Acts 9 and 1. And Saul, whose name was changed to Paul, who wrote most of the New Testament, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of Abashiach Yahushua, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that, he, that if he found any of this way, what way? Rolling in Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushua, 
whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound in chains unto Jerusalem. See? And as he was journeying, he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined about, surround about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth. Big bad Saul. He fell to the earth. And heard a voice saying to them, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? See, that's why he told you in Matthew 25, 31, down. When you're done unto the least of them, my people, who are the children of Israel, done unto me. That's why he's saying, why persecutest thou me? Because he suffered for all of us as the Israelites. So he asked, why are you persecuting my people, my brethren, my sisters? And he said, who art thou, master? And the master said, I am Mashiach. I am a Mashiach Yahushai, whom thou persecuted. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling. He got scared then, this big bad Saul. Having us put to death. He was right there when Stephen got put to death. They laid down their clothes and all that stuff. So he could walk over like he was somebody. And this is an example to show you that the Most High can take anybody. We're not talking about somebody did something to him and he killed people. We kill, he killing people for calling on Baha Sham Amashiach Yahushua in the name of the anointed Savior. What y'all doing? We never learned that in the church. He was killing you for that. You ready for that? And you heard what he just said. Verse 15. But Amashiach Yahushua said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles, which are the Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. Like, you see him going to, send them letters to Corinthians, Israelites in Corinth and Thessalonians and so forth and so on. All the different letters that he wrote and to places that he went. Preaching to the Israelites who are Gentiles, just like a lot of our people. More of our people are Gentiles than they are Israelites in their mindset, even here in America. Are you a Jew or you're a Gentile? They will say they're a Gentile. That's why I say you just told you the grace and mercy came to the Israelites, the saints. But y'all taught that the Gentiles receive grace. And that's who you think that you are. Gentile, grafted in among somebody that you cannot declare who it is. You're grafted in among. Got speaking tongues and be filled with the Holy Ghost and run around the church like a chicken with his head cut off and do all the things that y'all do that you've been perpet you've been dating perpetrated a fraud, a lie to you, and telling you this is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and that's a lie. Tell them to show you in the Bible the definition of the Spirit of the Most High. Do that. Then you start to get understanding. Say, wait a minute, that's don't sound right. You're just following just you just following traditions of men or women. Either or. Can't prove nothing. First Thessalonians 5 21 says, prove all things. Prove it. That's the spirit of the most high. That's what Mashiach Shah was doing when he was here. He was full of the spirit. <laughs> that's what he was doing. When he went to the synagogues, went to the temples. Listen. This is concerning Saul. But the Most High, to a Mashiach Yahushai, said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer. For what? For my name's sake. For Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushai. See? He blinded him. <laughs> Look at verse 13. Because um, he told him to go to Ananias to get his, he going to receive his sight back. He blinded him. It says, then Ananias answered. Verse 13. Master, I have heard by many of this man, talk about Saul, same one as, whose name was changed to Paul, how much evil, hear that? How much evil 
he have done of thy saints. What are these children of Israel? No one else at Jerusalem. Here he said how much evil Saul was doing to the saints who are the 12 tribes of Israel in Jerusalem. And here he have authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushua in the name of the Lord of Savior. Because they just calling out his name. That has no power. He said, you ask anything in my name, I would do it that the Father could be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I would do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Do what I say do. Follow my rules and regulations. Simple as that. In Ananias, verse 17, went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the master, even of my Yahushai, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, have sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately there fell it from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. So he's with the disciples, and straightway he preached to Mashiach in the synagogues that he is the son of the Most High. So that's a change, you see? He changed them. So that, this is a perfect example to let you know why he says this. For all you that think you done did so much that you can't repent, you can't ask for forgiveness and come back to this truth. Acts 17 and 30. In the times of this ignorance, the time that you didn't know, the Most High winked at. He winked at. But now, commanded all men everywhere to repent. To ask for forgiveness for the things that you've done wrong. Because he has appointed a day. It's going to be a day. In the which he will judge the world in righteousness. According to the law, statute, commandments of the Most High. That's righteousness. By that man, Amashiach Yavashai, whom we have ordained. Whereof he have given assurance unto all men. In that he have raised them from the dead. The third day. Walked the earth for 40 days. Ascended to the right hand side of the Most High. Back to where he came from. Go to Acts 26. Acts the 26th chapter. Acts 26. And verse you know understand this with him putting his hand and being a part of killing us the children of Israel people was like hey this is him. That killed one of their family members. Or one of their friends. An Israelite. Hmm. So when he got a chance to go before Agrippa, this is what it says. King Agrippa, it says in verse 19. Acts 26 and 19 said, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem. You see, it was a vision. Remember the Most High speaks once, speaks, yet the Most High speaks twice. Did man perceive it not? In a dream, in a vision. And deep slumbering comes up on the bed when he opened up their minds to take pride away from men, give them directions. The heavenly vision that he had. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, these Israelites, 
that are Gentiles. It don't take a rocket science to figure this out because you ask most people of our people, are they Jew or Gentile? What are they going to say? Today, majority of them that go to church or go to some religion, they're going to say they're Gentiles. But all praise to the Most High, this truth is not going out void. And we're waking up knowing that we are the Israelites, the people of this book. And I challenge anybody to prove that that's not a fact. That they're the Israelites and we're not. I haven't seen it yet. You're not both in just facts. Verse 19 again. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. You just got to go out and suffer for what? The Hashem of Mashiach, in the name of the Lord and Savior, who he was killing people for calling on the name of the Lord and Savior, which is spiritual power. From the Most High, power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, as we just read. Most High, weep at your ignorance. But he want all, everybody to repent. That they should repent and turn to the Most High in keeping his law, statutes, commandments and do works meet for repentance. You got to follow these laws and commandments. Do what's right. Be righteous. For it to be right for repentance. You can't repent and then continue to do the same thing over and over again. No, it don't work like that. But these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. You hear that? Because they're like, hey, this is him. We got him. He done put work in killing our people. Now we can put work in killing him. They wanted to kill him. Listen. Having therefore obtained help of the Most High, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. The prophets and Moses said should come. That of Mashiach Yahushai should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people, the Israelites, and to the Gentiles, the Israelites. Because show me where he went to the, a lot of y'all be saying, Paul went to the other nations. Show me that. Prove that when you go through the first books of each chapter that he wrote a letter to or he went to. That he's talking to. And I'll show you that you don't know what you're talking about. Because if it's say God. The most high the power of Abraham, who had a son named Isaac, who had a son named Jacob. And Jacob became the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. And it says to the saints. In all those, majority of those first verses of each chapter. It will say the most high, it say God, and that's who he is. Only two. If it say saints, we just find the saints in Psalms 148. 14. The Master Shai said in Matthew 15, 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So how are you going to put them in there, these other nations and so forth? That's the lie. It's been perpetrated on this earth to keep you dumbed down in darkness, in ignorance, not knowing. Because they know you don't want to read. They know you ain't going to study. So you just regurgitate what somebody told you. Regurgitate these scriptures. Remember these scriptures. And the meaning of them. They represent the power of powers. The powers of the Most High. It's His word. Here he said, Having therefore obtained help of the Most High, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that a Mashiach Yahushai should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. Now look. Okay, let's look at that light. Real quick, go to Proverbs 6 and 23. Show light, right? Because he is the light. Proverbs 6, 23. 
It has to make sense, y'all. Proverbs 6.23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law of the Most High is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You see, reproofs of instruction are the way of life. That's why we got to reprove people to show them the right way. Whether they hear or whether they forbear. At least their blood is not on you. So my single shy was that light. He said it was that light. Which is contrary to what? Darkness. That's why I go to uh, St. John. First chapter. Consider the Mashiach of Shai, the word of the Most High. Verse 4. In him was life. The Mashiach of Shai was life, and, he, and the life was the light of men. His life was to show us how to follow the rules and regulations of the Most High, his law, statutes, and commandments. This is what it says. Verse 5. And the light shineth in darkness. So the laws of the Most High, the commandments of the Most High, is shining in ignorance. In the Roman Empire, amongst the children of the devil and the children of light, because the children of the devil outnumber the children of light because only one-third of the children of light can see this. Two-thirds, double the amount of the one-third, it's not going to see it. It's going to remain in darkness. It was in darkness. When you look at how it was against the law to even call yourself an Israelite when he came on the earth. From the Greek empire. So people wouldn't even call themselves. That's why you said that they call Gentiles. Just like it is today. And that new one of the sun. And the light shined up in darkness. And the darkness comprehended not. See? People that's in darkness, that's ignorant, that don't know these scriptures, they not going to comprehend this. You're not going to get this on your own. you got to be taught. He came to teach us. That's why I say he the way. But we want to we follow our own way. Remember what I said? We want to follow our own way. And be deceived by the devil. That's his job. Look, go to Revelation. Right to the point, 12 and 9. Revelation 12 and 9. Y'all think I'm just talking out the side of my neck, right? Revelation 12. Now, and the great dragon, who's the devil, was cast out, the old serpent, called the devil, here it is, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. See? That's who you're rolling with. And when you hear uh, Ecclesiastes 3.24, for many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion overthrowing their judgment, there it is. The devil overthrowing your judgment, make you make the wrong judgment to help you go to hell with him. See? The great dragon, all these are the devil, Satan, and the beast, and all the spirits of the devil. They had a devil in them. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, the same one we read about in Genesis, the third chapter, that came to Eve. And Eve brought it to Adam in deceit, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels with him, cast out with him. He got ministers that work with him, that appear as an angel of light. I've showed you that over and over again. So he was cast out in the earth, said, where you been, Satan? When the most asked Satan in Job, the first chapter, where you been, Satan? He said, going up and down, to and fro on the earth. That's that cross they put, they, they put on their chest. Up and down, to and fro on the earth. That cross that y'all wearing around your neck. A symbol of death. If that's what you believe, he died on the cross. When they say he hung on a tree. But you believe that he was died. I mean, think about it. Our people are wearing crosses. And would you wear an electric chair if your parents was executed in an electric chair? Or would you wear a tree around your neck if one of your relatives was hung on a tree? A symbol of a tree on your neck? Come on, man. A lot of y'all got Caesar boys here. That's why that so-called white image on, the, on that cross. You can't say you don't believe that the white man going to come back and save you. Because you got it around your neck. Mm, mm, mm. Once again. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent from Genesis 3rd chapter. Called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. 
He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And now they appeared as an angel of light. And y'all can't even see the light because you in darkness. Ignorance, not knowing. Dumbfounded. Saddest children, the most I call us. Amongst other things he calls us. That's just part of what he's, he calls us, but <laughs> amongst many things. Look. Go to uh, Psalms 147, 19, and 20. Psalms 147, 19, and 20. Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Listen to what he said. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise you the most high. So he only showed his word to the Israelites. That's it. That's it. To the 12 tribes of Israel. Go to Romans, the 8th chapter. So he's talking to the Israelites. And he speaks of different nations as they're involved with or prophesy about what's going to happen to them in the future or what has happened to them or how they were involved with us in the past, the present, and the future. Romans, the 8th chapter, and... The 17th verse. Select it. Romans 8 and 17. And if children, let's read verse 16. It says, the spirit of the Most High itself bear witness with our spirit that we are the children of the Most High. It's what tries to Israel. And if children of the Most High, then heirs, meaning we have an inheritance that's promised to us. And if children, if we the children of the Most High, the 12 tribes of Israel, it's important that you get used to saying the 12 tribes of Israel because that is an elimination of anyone else that does not claim to be an Israelite. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with him, Mashiach Yahushai, if so be that we suffer with him. So this is not something you come into, you look at at all, oh, it's going to be this easy path. You know what he said? If we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We're going to be glorified together with him. You see, he suffered. You know, just look on uh, my YouTube channel. The death of Mashiach Yahushai. All that he went through. Or if you don't want to do that, just simply look at the passion. That movie. Because it's a beat down from the beginning to the end. And that's what he went through. A beat down from the beginning to the end. That's why I say his face was marred more than any man. Cold. But see, we have an opportunity to be joint heirs with a Mashiach Yahweh shot. To the glory of the Most High. Glorified together in the kingdom that's already prepared for us. Plenteousness already prepared for us. New Jerusalem already built, ready to come down. Once he purified this earth with fire. There's two purifying elements, water and fire. So he's going to use fire. He ain't going to flood the earth no more, he said. That's why he put the rainbow in the sky to remind himself, I'm not going to flood the earth anymore. 
going to burn it up and you're going to burn a lot of people up with it. <laughs> this is what it says. Verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Hear that? The suffering that we're suffering and going through is nothing to be compared with the glory of the kingdom that's already prepared for us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High. The angels waiting on us to get ourselves together. And I see it manifested right before, like you say, you're going to put us in order right before they face. Because everybody's saying, repent and come back to the laws, touch the commandments of the Most High. Hallelujah to the Most High. But Shema Mashiach Yahushua. So we coming back. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth. They waiting for the manifestation of the sons of the Most High, who we are. <laughs> it's happening right now as I'm speaking. The Sabbath being honored all over the world. Go to 1 Corinthians, the third chapter, verse 12. The angels waiting for us to get us together. And we get it together right before their eyes. 1 Corinthians 3, the third chapter. Let's read from 12 to 15. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, what foundation is talking about? Verse 11. For other foundations can no man lay than that is laid, which is Hamashiach Yahushai. So that foundation is built upon a Mashiach Yahweh Now, if any man build upon the, this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest in what you're doing in these mortal bodies. It's going to be made manifest because it's written in the books. For the day shall declare it. See that? That day going to declare it. That day of judgment going to declare it because it shall be revealed by fire. By the word of the Most High. And that fire that he's going to bring upon this earth. For the fire, the word of the Most High, which is the fire, shall try every man's work. Of what sort it is. Whether it's good or whether it's evil. Well, I guess I've got to prove what that fire is. Because some of you might be saying, oh, that's fire. And I don't mean that. It means they're going to be burnt up. No. You burn up, you can't. Ain't no, ain't no more of you. Look at it. Jeremiah 23 and 29. He said, Is not my word like as a fire? See, the word of the Most High is fire. Said the Most High. So you got to deal with the Most High on that. He said it. Is not my word like as fire? As a fire? Said the Most High. And like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? So now, now that we know that fire is the word, going back to 1 Corinthians 3 and 13, it says, every man's work shall be made manifest. Everything that we have done in these mortal bodies is going to be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Hear that? Because it shall be revealed by fire, by the word of the Most High. He coming to judge and make war with a righteous judgment which is coming to judge according to the word of the most high that's why it's very important for everybody that hears my voice or hear the prophets or the, or the men of the most high that are bringing forth this truth in these last days to pay attention and change every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it the day going to declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is, right? So now, when it says, for the day shall declare it, every man's work, right? So let's go to, hold that. We'll come back there. Let's get Revelations 20. Just to prove what I just said. Revelation 20, and as I said, it's been written in the books, everything we do. Revelation 20 and 12. And I saw the dead. Revelation 20 and 12. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before the Most High, and my second was shot, and the books were open. See, everything we do is written in books. The angels are writing in books. And another book was open, which is the book of life. That's another book. And that's what we're trying in our works, that our names will be written in the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You see that? According to what we've done in these mortal bodies. It's being written in the books. It's being recorded. Remember the Mosai's eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun. The angels are watching everything. and recording everything in the books. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. So death and hell got to give up the people that's in it too. And they were judged every man according to their works. Hear that? And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's what I say. It's important that you understand that we do works and the things that we do in these mortal bodies at this time can allow our names to be written in the book of life. We can live forever. Because you can look at it however you want to, but this might be our last time to get it right. As of this, you're going to be thrown in the lake of fire. The judgments could come. There ain't no coming back if you're wicked and evil. Listen. Isaiah 3 and 14. If any man's work Abide which he have built thereon upon, he shall receive a reward. You're going to receive your name written in the book of life, as we just read. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire, as so, yet so as by keeping the word of the Most High. See? It's all constructive. Understanding of the anointed Savior of Mashiach Yahweh to the glory of the Most High. Telling us what works. It's telling you what works. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved. Yet so as by fire. Yet so as him keeping the word of the Most High. Doing what the Most High says for us to do. Other than that, you're going to be burned too. We just said, your name not written in the book of life, what's going to happen to you? You're going to be thrown in a lake of fire. We just read that. Simple as that. And that fire is talking about the tribulation, the suffering that the Most High going to put on you. First Corinthians 4 and 12. And labor, Salakia, 